So Carl told me in the last episode that it came on way too strongly with that uh, monologue from Seven. Um, he's not wrong, but uh, that first movie was like a shotgun to the face. So I had to equalize it somehow. Uh, Carl is working on his editing techniques. Um, so I'm still going to blame him, even though he's invisible and imaginary. Um, so with that said, welcome to... Mm, cat Studios. No kitty. It's my show. Thank you for that wonderful intro, Carl. Um, so no, the title is not clickbait. Uh, I did win an award in 2003 for the Berkeley Reading Council uh, SC Young Writers Award in 2003. Uh, I was not there to get this lovely plaque uh, that they so lovingly laser etched in there, and I have no idea how many people actually did this. Um, it was one of those things where you send in a short story or whatever, um, and then if you win it out of a group of people, you won a prize. Um, the prize was we all got, all the winners got to go to uh, Columbia to an elementary school to meet with a bunch of professional writers. Um, There's like two novelists and the rest were all poets for some reason. Um, and then weirdly, I just wanted to write short stories, but have recently done a lot of poetry. But it's fine. Um, was it a good experience? Sure, I guess. Um, it was submitted by my uh, speech teacher. She wasn't, she was an English teacher, but she wasn't my English teacher. I just knew her from speech class. You know, where you get up and you talk in front of a bunch of people kind of like this, except without a camera. Um, and, uh, she said, I know you, I heard you like to write short stories or whatever. And, uh, this is, you know, I, I, I gave her this one. She's like, you should, you know, should submit this. Would you mind if I did this for you? I was like, sure. No, I don't have an issue with that. Um, she was a nice, sweet lady. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Notice I'm on my monitor. It's fine. It's not broken. The other one's broken, but it works. Off topic. Um, Miss Owens, you're a very sweet lady. Um, so she told me, like, the story is kind of Jewish, where it has, like, a moral to it, I guess. Um... <laughs> There's a moral. There's like you know, like a like like the first part of the bio where it's like it's it's all stories meant to tell and teach kind of thing. Um, at least that was her explanation for it. Um, I just liked writing short, weird stories. I was 16. Uh, I think I won it before I was 17. It was it was one of those things between 16 and 17 that I wrote this, and uh, I would like to read it to you now. So. Let's get started with that. So, it is called The Herb. Um, it was just a blank generic title I wanted to do, kind of a horror story. And, like, you know, The Herb, you know, people, like, some people's immediate thing is like, ooh, is it about drugs? No. So, let's get started with this. Six pages long, but it's not that long. It was the thing that changed me. I regret now that I ever went in search of that herb. Things that are impossible to, um, I should be imagine. Uh, things that are, impo that are impossible to image happened to me when I found it. I'm just going to read it how I wrote it. Like I'm a, no, it's 16. I'm an idiot. I hate that green substance now as, it's, as I stare at it in a jar of water, cracking through the seal and starting to grow and screech at me. It felt for me, yet I kept far away from it. Mutation is the most horrible thing that can happen to a human being, but it had unfortunately happened to me. It had been a dark night when I found it. The herb was the last from my collection, and I wish once again that I hadn't found it. I was reading a lot of Lovecraft at the time, um, and for several years afterwards. Uh, Lovecraft is great. He might be a little racist, but he's fantastic. Middle of the jungle, in the sweltering heat, I peered down into the valley. A valley of a thousand evils was its name. Natives dared not to go, dared not to go into it, and now I wish I had heeded their warnings. Creeping forward, I made for the mysterious statue before me. 
Jari Toa, the sacred god of the undead, was the twisted was the statue's form. Wherever Jari Toa was, it usually meant hard death or evil blessings. The twisted face stared at me, almost smiling. I just used to watch uh, Exorcist every single day when I got off uh, um, school. I don't know why that popped in my brain. And then I watched the Ninja Turtles because that movie's scary. Uh, it, it's when damaged arms stretched into the valley and its foot stepping back. I wonder what this meant, but I realized I already knew. Back off from this valley. I, a well-known scientist, that should be known, Orion Clark did not follow Jari Toa's orders and climb down into the valley. I reached the bottom without a problem, but found one, but found one when I came nearer to the forest. Yep. Now the val, now the valley was supposed to be uninhabited, but strangely, an old man greeted me at the gate, at the gate of Ferneo Forest. Evening, he said in a gruff voice. I guess there should be more. Evening, he said in a gruff voice, smiling and looking over at, with his one dark eye. Looking me over with his one dark eye. I swear to God, I can read. I wrote this shit. I can fucking read it. That's page one. Oh, there we go. I returned his salutation. Uh, evening. I thought this valley was uninhabited. Oh, it is. It is. He said with even more of a grin. Only, I'm not an inhabitant. I am a cursed one. I was puzzled. A cursed one? Yes, the old man, old cursed man, lowered his eyes. I was sent to, I was sent to live in this forest forever, for punishment. I am now around, what year is it? Uh, two thousand, sir. Yes, yes, yes. That makes me about, I don't know, one thousand seven hundred and eighty-four. You're probably wondering how this is possible. Well, I'll tell you. Would you come a bit closer? I was uneasy about that question. I did not know this cursed man that happened to be older than this millennium. Cautiously, I moved forward. A bit closer. I need to tell you in private, he said, the grin widening. I, I stopped a few yards from him. Uh, what is it that it needs to be secret? No one is around these parts. He frowned a little. Just come closer and I'll tell you. I retorted. No, I will not come any closer than this. Suddenly he twisted into the very form of Jari Toa and sprung forward, knocking me to the ground. He scratched me and a burning pain came through the cut. Then, just as it began for my, f just as it began for my face, the creature reared back and exploded. I swear to God, these things are not screwing up my reading. It's my brain. Uh, I was frightened at the time, and, you know, who wouldn't be? The burning pain surged through my veins, but thankfully I was prepared. I reached then into my pack and pulled out a small vial of green liquid. It was an ancient concoction made from green tar malisk, a strange plant from... All right, next page. Come on. There you go. The upper banks of the region that I was in. I popped off the cork and drank it all. The liquid tasted disgusting but it made the pain stop. I searched the ground and found nothing but a small key made of sanded stone. I placed it in my pocket, knowing that if the Jari Toa creature had, had it, the key was, if the Jari Toa creature had it, then the key was of, of great importance. I looked at the gate of Farineo Forest and beyond it to the woods. It was a gloomy place deep within, but outside, the valley tried to mask it with unusual beauty. The gate was just a large bridge over a swift river cluttered with rocks. It swung slowly in the light wind. <laughs> Sorry. I went up to the gate and took hold of the ropes. There again, on either side of the bridge, were the idols of Jari Toa. I inhaled several long, deep breaths before I crossed. I hated high places. One of my worst phobias. That one's actually true. It, I, I don't like... I don't like high places. Um, once again, I continued with no problem until I stepped off the bridge. 
Natives or something of the like stood across on the other side of the river. They shouted something in their native tongue which translated into this. You have sealed your fate. You have cert you search for the wicked plant. You will not take us with you. Then they sliced their side of the bridge away from mine. The gate of the Farineo Forest fell into the river and its rocky crags tore it to pieces. I looked down as it went, and the bridge was no more. I brought up my eyes again. I got my eyes up again. The natives, or whatever they were, were not there anymore. They simply vanished. Preposterous, I thought. But that was what had happened, and there was no use in deceiving myself. I had seen it with my own two eyes. Next page. There we go. I turned then to the forest. Evil it seemed to be, and evil indeed it was. I stepped into the dark wood and found myself lost. I turned around silently to see if I could see or hear the river as I had before. But all I heard and saw was the woods, the deep, dumb, and evil woods. Dumb meaning like, you know, like deaf, dumb, and blind. Meaning like it, there's no sound coming out of it. Um, that's what they used to call people. Um, dumb, not being stupid. Um, Forever I thought I walked, and forever I walked and felt. Time dragged on and on like the universe in its empty black holes. Step after step I took, and every one longer than the last. Soon evening went to dusk, and dusk into the pitch black night. That's when I saw the light come out from the ground. It was beautiful at first, as it glowed and glistened. Its appearance as perfect as a jewel freshly cut from the rock which bound it. An aromatic fume filled my nostrils. It was a mixture of vanilla, strawberries, and other sweet-smelling things. Little did I know then that that plant would turn into my destructor. I wish I had known, but the aroma and the beauty of it had blinded my judgment. I knelt close to the ground. The wet soil soaked through my to my clothes and rooted me to the spot spoke wet soil soaked through to my clothes and you know it should be into my clothes but anyway rooted me to the spot just like the very plant i was leaning over my trembling hand caressed the plant its name whipped into my mind garandium ocaritoga i made that one up in the native tongue oh so i really made it up the name meaning the plant of Jari Toa's evil. Uh, I didn't understand the meaning of it either until I picked it out from the ground. Uh, free from the ground, it held, I held it close to my face. Since the moon's light had faded, the plant had still great luminescence, and so did the ground beneath it. I tried to stand, but the soil had grasped my legs and held them straight down. I struggled to remove myself from it, but could not. The plant squirmed in my hand. I looked at it, and another voice, not mine, screeched in my mind. Nope. It helps if you're on the right damn screen, huh? Free me! Free me! Eat me or free me. Eat me and you will not die, or else free me and let me live. I answered back, what happens if I do let you go? You will die. Eat me or free me. I, I don't know. I, just... I pulled my arm towards my mouth as the plant squirmed and the ground sank me farther in. So, after a deep breath and no reasonable thinking, I bit off a large leaf and ate it. Everything after that was emptiness in my mind and I can never recall. When I finally did wake, I was back in New York City in my apartment building. I was puzzled as to how I had gotten there, but the newspaper told it all in large, bold letters. Whole village destroyed in Congo. Suspect a scientist. That's a hell of a title. Dark. When I gazed over to the plant, somehow now submerged in water, I suspected the newspaper article was on something that I had done when I was unconscious. 
The plan had taken over my slow, unconscious mind as my strong, conscious mind slipped into, the, into a dark crevice. The plant was just as evil as the natives that were now dead had believed. Tears of pain surged through me. I soon found the source. It was the large oblong box between my tired hands. My hands cracked as I wiggled them beside the box. Then I, and I then, unwillingly, maybe because of the plant's power, which might have still resided within me, reached into my pocket and pulled out the stone key. I searched all over the box for a hole and found one on the bottom, next to three Jari Toa figures. I had no idea what I was doing, or why, but I was doing it just the same. I slid the key into the box, and it fell apart into nine separate pieces. The centerpiece, the largest, also had words inscribed on it. Ancient native, as far as I could tell. Moments passed as I tried to decipher the words. Finally, I found the meaning, and it almost made me wish I had not searched for the herb. It was re the reading of the final torture and punishment for going in search for it. It was the final. It was the reading of the final torture and punishment for going in search for it. All right. I should have left the wicked plant alone in its dark forest. This is what the stone read. One who goes in search of the plant will suffer great loss. Nothing shall take it from our land, or Jaritoa is his god. Twisted and turned, he will become and fall into a cursed one. Suddenly, every, everything spun, blending nature into urban and confusing the world. I fell, but not into the ground. I was falling through a darkness I had never seen. Things I never knew existed were now real and painful. They grabbed me as I continued to fall and spin out of my control. Then I found bottom, and it was close enough to hell as I could get when later I found it was really hell, and Jari Toa was the lord of it all. Mirrors passed me, quickly, but in great numbers. I had just enough chance to see my mutated face and see myself formed into a Jari Toa creature. I wanted repent, wanted to repent, that I found the herb, but could not. I had to suffer the consequences. Nothing could really describe what I had changed into, and I doubt anything ever will. Surroundings changed once again as I stood in horror of myself. The deep pits of fire turned into dirt holes and grass. The red air around me turned clear and blue. Bare ground turned into hills and plains. I had returned to the valley. This time... I was not alone. Thousands upon thousands of other creatures like me swarmed the valley like silent bees. None appeared to be human, but were in actuality. Were, but in actuality, were at one point in time, just like I. They too had, had greedily gone in search of the herb. Pause, Carl. Ah. So that is what I wrote when I was uh, 16 or 17. Um, I have made another pass at this, which I might read at a later date. Um, which I, I, th I think I fixed a few, a lot of the problems. I mean, you're 16. You think you know the fucking world. You don't. Um, you're 17. You're 35. You, you don't know the world. Um, nobody does. Anyway... I did win an award for this. They might have been giving them out like fucking scout badges. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, if you ever try to look that up, it, you're just going to see a picture of my principal like shaking the hand of the person that gave it to me uh, or gave it to him to give it to me. I wasn't there that day. I don't remember what I was doing. I was probably at my grandma's house. Um, so anyway... That is that. Um, if you want any other recommendations that are just going to randomly pop up, check this out. Dr. Dre, Compton, a soundtrack by Dr. Dre. Uh, this is fantastic. I've had it for years, and uh, I re-listened to it like like the last month or whatever, just like nonstop. Dr. Dre, his third album, and it is a consummate... Uh, uh, album 
putting together all the things that he's done over the years. He did have his start. This was one of my starts. And um, I think the next episode that will come up like this um, will be a very long one. But we will be reading The Origin of Acid Cat. Um, there is an actual origin story for it, and it's very fucking weird. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain that one when it gets around to it. You'll, I think he explains, uh, the whole deal of why he's called Acid Cat. I don't remember. I found it the other day. Again, I'm transferring things from one computer to the other. I own the copy of the book that I printed out for myself because, you know, I make a lot of art, but, you know. Which I then sell back to myself because, after all, I am a private collector. Um, th thank you, Stephen Wright, for that joke. I am Jake. This is Asgard Studios. I hope you had a great time. I don't know why I paused there, but I did. Check that out. Uh, there's other stuff to check out on the channel. They're all terrible. Um... But I hope you have a great day. And I will see you beautiful motherfuckers in the next one. All right? Deal? Again, do all that stupid YouTube crap. All right? Later, guys. Earl here. When do I get paid?